Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a new laptop from Dell. This is the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. And like any good 2-in-1, it functions as a laptop, but also as a media player. When you flip the screen around like so, you can turn it into a tablet with pen support. And we're going to check out that pen in a little bit. And of course, you can operate it in tent mode. A really nice looking machine here and we're going to be taking a closer look at what this machine is all about in just a second but i do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in on loan from dell so we're done with this it goes back to them all the opinions you're about to hear are my own nobody is paying for this review nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded so let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about so let's take a closer look now at the hardware the price point on this one begins at $1,000 and works its way up from there. Uh, the one we're looking at today is kind of in the mid to high end of the line. It costs about $1,700 as configured. Uh, this one has a new Ice Lake Intel processor, an i7-1065G7. Uh, this also has Intel Iris graphics built in, so you're going to see some fairly decent performance in games. It's not going to be a gaming laptop, but it will do better than prior generations did for gaming without a discrete GPU on board. Uh, the starting point has an i3 Ice Lake processor, so the less expensive ones will not perform the same as what you're about to see with this i7 version. Uh, there's 16 gigabytes of RAM installed on this one with 512 gigabytes of storage. Uh, you do need to configure the RAM and storage when you buy it because you can't upgrade either. I believe all uh, the stuff that you would normally upgrade on a laptop are soldered on the motherboard here. So you are going to be limited to what you purchase up front. Uh, so be aware of that. I know a lot of you don't like that. So just know that going into this one, it's not very upgradable. Uh, all of the laptops in the line have a 13.4 inch display. It's IPS. Uh, touch, of course, because uh, this can go into tablet mode, so you have all of the things you would expect from that. And I'm really pleased with the display. It is super sharp. I love the viewing angles on this. Uh, it's a 1920 by 1200 display. And what's nice is that the display itself sits very, very close to the glass. There's not much of an air gap here. Uh, so if you've played around with higher end smartphones, this has a very similar look to it. It's a really nice screen uh, and they've done a nice job integrating everything into this package with very thin bezels, even at the bottom here. Uh, they managed to fit the webcam at the top. Uh, it's not terrific though, it's 720p. And I noticed that uh, with my overhead circular lights here, the light was kind of beaming down as a ray uh, as I was using it here in the studio. So you might see some weird things based on the optics that they had to shrink down to make this camera work. Uh, but in the end of the day for web conferencing, I think it's better to have the camera here than down here, which we've seen on prior Dell models where the camera is kind of shooting up your nostrils. So that uh, at least was an improvement there. Uh, the fit and finish on this is very nice. You've got metal on the outside. I think this is either a plastic or a carbon fiber here on the keyboard deck. In the past, Dell has been using some carbon fiber material. It's got a very nice feel to it, uh, relatively thin as you can see here. It feels a little heavy to me at 2.9 pounds or 1.32 kilograms, but the weight gives it a really nice solid feel to it. Uh, the weight itself though isn't as balanced as some other premium laptops are, so when you get the screen up about halfway here, it will lift the keyboard up with it but overall i think it's a pretty solid design uh, there is a 4k option available for the display and i think that might add a little bit of weight to the package here but to be honest in this size i think the 1920 by 1200 display is more than adequate uh, the keyboard is pretty nice it's a little bit on the clickier side of things uh, the travel on the keys in other words how far they push down is not all that deep uh, but it does have very nice size keys and good keyboard spacing, and I found it wasn't hard to type on it. It reminds me a little bit of the newer Apple keyboards, but I think the technology they're using here to make this thin keyboard is different and more reliable, so I don't think you're going to get the keys sticking uh, like we were on the Apple. I'm still dealing with a few laptops around the house here with that problem. Uh, the keyboard is backlit. Uh, they integrated a nice fingerprint reader here into the power button, so you can get uh, the computer turned on and unlocked with one keystroke, which was cool to see that. 
Uh, the trackpad here is excellent. Dell's been putting some nice trackpads on their devices for a while now. Uh, what's neat about it is that you can click on it almost throughout the entire trackpad, not just the lower portion. So even up here, I'm able to execute clicks. And of course, you can do your two finger click for right clicking and do some other customization that you might want to do there. A nice uh, trackpad here and it works well. Uh, this has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on board. You've got one on this side and one on the other side. And what's nice about Thunderbolt is that it's backwards compatible with USB-C, but it's a lot faster. So you could plug in an external graphics processor, for example. You can use docking stations. A lot of stuff out there that you can pop into these Thunderbolt ports to get uh, some really good performance out of them. Uh, these are four lane Thunderbolt ports, so they give you the full speed of that specification and their full service too, so you can have the power adapter plugged on, into either side and be able to charge the laptop, get display out, and of course connect your USB and Thunderbolt devices. So it's good to see Thunderbolt being supported on a little laptop like this, and I was quite pleased with that. You've got a micro SD card slot here, so you can store your media or something like that on there and maybe go with a less expensive, smaller main hard drive. And then on the other side here, you have a headphone jack, so you can plug in your headphones for perhaps a little better audio quality. Now the built-in speakers sound surprisingly good on this. They put them on the bottom, and typically I'm not a big fan of downward firing speakers, but these actually work pretty nicely because they kind of angle off to the side and it's got very good stereo separation, decent loudness, nice and clear. Uh, so they did a very nice job on the speaker set here. Uh, battery life on this is not bad either. Uh, Intel is getting a lot better at managing power to these chips, and as a result, you'll get uh, a little bit more juice out of these things. Uh, we're seeing about nine to 10 hours of battery life doing light tasks on the laptop. Uh, light tasks I would consider to be Microsoft Word and some web browsing, maybe watching a video or two, but nothing too strenuous. If you play games or do something that's going to tax that processor more, the battery will deplete faster. I also recommend using a lower brightness on the display to further the battery life on there, but it's pretty good for all day usage. And again, your mileage will vary based on what you are doing with it. And this is not a fanless laptop, unlike the prior generation. It's running with a 15 watt processor that has to be actively cooled with a fan. Uh, the fan isn't all that loud and it doesn't come on all that often. If you start running a game or doing something that's really taxing the chip like video editing, uh, that's where you'll probably hear the fan kick on. It wasn't all that loud though compared to other laptops that we've looked at that are about this size and form factor. So it's not all that distracting, but again, you'll hear a fan when you are pushing the laptop. But generally, if you're doing Word documents or web browsing or even a little video watching, we're not hearing it come on all that much. What I am hearing though is something called coil whine, especially when the built-in SSD is under load. And you'll hear that kind of like a buzzing, clicking kind of sound coming out of this section of the computer. For a few minutes, I thought maybe there was a spinning hard drive inside because you often hear the drive head moving back and forth with a little click. You'll kind of hear that here if you're in a very quiet room. I looked online on some forums and it appears to be something that uh, this one and some of the prior ones were dealing with. So you might hear a little bit of noise on this one even when the fan is off, but the hard drive is active. So you should be aware of that. Now there is also active pen support and they have an optional pen that you can add to the mix. And what's nice about this is that there's a place for the pen to go. So if you uh, just get it close to the side of the computer here, it will magnetically attach and it will stay on the laptop here so you can walk around with the pen and have a place for it to go. It secures itself pretty nicely here with a magnet. Let's take a look now and see how it works. Now the Dell pen here will cost you about 100 bucks or so. Uh, there are less expensive active pen options out there, but this is the only one that attaches itself properly to the side of the screen. Uh, when you get the pen close to the screen, the computer will detect it. There'll be a little cursor that appears underneath it. And then if I push my uh, pen down here to write on the screen and rest my wrist, you'll see that it's only registering the pen. So it's got all the good wrist detection stuff you would like to see in an active pen device. My big gripe with the pen though is that the erase button is right here and I keep resting my thumb against it and it's very sensitive. So I'm always just accidentally hitting that as I'm going to write on it. 
Uh, so as a pen experience, it isn't bad, but the large size of the screen here means that as the pen draws away, uh, you might find that your wrist does start doing stuff on screen. So you can see here with my wrist just slightly lifted up, I activated this menu down here, and then everything goes crazy. So the pen experience on Windows is still not as good as what I've experienced on the iPad Pro. I think Apple uh, still has the edge here, but if you're looking for a decent workable pen, I think this one is not bad and you'll have uh, usable pen support on this. Uh, there's pressure sensitivity here with the Dell pen, so we can just lightly press down on the screen and get one kind of line here, and then we can push harder and get a darker line as we draw across here. So you do have some of that. There's apparently some tilt detection here as well, uh, which will give you a different line if you uh, have the pen at a tilted angle. I haven't found many apps that really take advantage of that, uh, that detection or that, that feature, uh, but it is there and available to you if you are looking for tilt sensitivity. Uh, this pen has it. So let's take a look now at performance. We'll begin with some basic web browsing just so you can get a sense as to how fast everything responds here. So we'll pull up the nasa.gov homepage. We're on my AC wireless here at the house. I believe this supports the new Wi-Fi 6 standard, so it might be time for me to upgrade my Wi-Fi around here. And as you can see, the uh, web pages that we're visiting here spring to life very quickly and all render very quickly. Uh, that is what I would expect out of a laptop at this price point, so all good there. Uh, we also checked out my YouTube channel and ran a 60 frames per second video at 1080p. Uh, as expected, no drop frames, everything uh, was working fine there on YouTube. So I think if you're doing Netflix or any kind of video watching on here, it should be a very good experience. Uh, we also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test. Uh, that's a test that measures how well it does on the web. Uh, and there we got a score of 205.3 on version 1.0 of that test and 118 on version 2.0. A uh, very good score out of this uh, new processor, and I think it's on par with a lot of desktops that we looked at just a year or two ago. So altogether, a very nicely performing laptop for doing work and other business-like tasks. So let's move on now to gaming. We've got Rocket League that you can see running on screen. 1080p, low settings. We're getting about 80 to 110 frames per second. Not bad at all for an Intel GPU. When we set the settings up to high, we got around 40 to 55 frames per second. Again, pretty decent for an Intel processor. Uh, note, though, that this has the Iris graphics. I don't think you get Iris graphics at the entry-level version, so you'll see some differences with that 999 computer. But if you've got the Iris graphics on that Intel chip, this is what you're going to see. Uh, let's take a look now at GTA 5. Uh, there we were getting at 1080p low settings, 30 to 40 frames per second. Not bad, playable for sure. Not quite 60, but I bet if you turn the resolution down to 720p and tweaked it a little bit more, you could probably get close to that. Uh, these are scores we typically see on a computer with a low-end discrete GPU or an AMD chip. So this is good improvements here from Intel on the 3D graphics side. One last game to check out, and that is The Witcher 3. There at the low settings, 1080p, uh, we were getting about 20 to 30 frames per second. Again, not spectacular, but playable if you're out on the road. And for something this thin and light, or uh, relatively light, it's good to see the graphics performance starting to get there on these things where you can actually play a somewhat up-to-date game in a somewhat playable frame rate. And that was impressive to see. Now, we were unable to run Fortnite on this, I think due to some driver issues. We also had trouble running the 3D Mark benchmarks that we typically run on these machines as well, also due to driver issues. Dell let us know that they're having trouble getting that working right at this moment. But I did notice that notebookcheck.net, which is a great website for super in-depth laptop reviews, was able to get that test working. Maybe they got their hands on some drivers that I couldn't get my hands on. So we're going to use their score on the 3D Mark CloudGate test here because I very much trust the work that they do. And if we take a look at the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we can see the folks at Notebook Check with the same configuration got a score of 14,796 on the two in one. And at first glance, that is every bit as good as the Dell Inspiron 7000 that has a discrete GPU. That was something we looked at back in 2017. But you got to look at these scores a little more carefully to see where the numbers are coming from. And in this instance, we're getting a better score because the CPU on here is much more powerful 
than that seventh generation i5 processor was, and that's why the scores are the same. If you dig into the graphical results here on graphics test one and two, you can see the 1050 is much more powerful than the Irish GPU on this Intel chip. So you really gotta look closely at these numbers to see exactly where this performs. I was though surprised to see that this came in fairly close to an MX150 GPU we looked at on a laptop about two years ago. And that is probably a closer estimation as to the kind of performance we're getting from this. Although a discrete GPU I think will still be a little faster because these benchmarks tend to be a little bit synthetic and I think game developers tend to target enhancements and uh, performance uh, tuning to some of these NVIDIA chips that, of course, this laptop lacks. But nonetheless, it's still pretty good for games, a lot better than what we were seeing out of Intel GPUs just a year ago. Now, due to the driver issues that we're having with the laptop at the moment, we can't get the 3D Mark stress test to run, uh, which is how we measure throttling here on the channel. But I would point you at that notebookcheck.net article that did a fairly extensive look at a couple of different uh, ways to measure CPU throttling. Uh, in our testing with the games, we found that it was able to hold itself fairly consistently at the performance we saw. We didn't see these big dips and spikes that you sometimes see with computers that wildly throttle themselves. So I think overall, the performance should be relatively consistent, but unfortunately, we can't get you the exact 3D Mark stress test score. Uh, but we were able to get Linux running on it. We booted up Ubuntu 19.10. Uh, we found that video works here, obviously, along with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and audio. So all that is good. And we found the performance in Linux to be pretty darn good, just as good as it was in Windows, if not a little bit better. So that's been great. Uh, we also found that the touchscreen works on here along with Thunderbolt devices too, without having to install any drivers at all. Uh, so if you are looking to run Ubuntu, I think this is a good way to do it. And I'm sure other Linux operating systems should pretty much work on this fairly well as well, provided of course their driver packages are up to date. So good Linux performance here. Overall, a very decently performing laptop. I was very impressed with the games that we were able to run on it. Uh, we don't typically see these games working that well on Intel machines, but they are here, uh, provided you have those Iris graphics on the one that you choose. So that's important to know. Uh, the only thing I have really to knock this one on is the coil whine that I'm hearing when that drive is going. I'm sometimes hearing it too when the USB port has a lot of data activity. It's not very loud. It kind of sounds like an old hard drive or something, but it's there. And if you're in a very quiet environment, it's something you're going to hear coming out of the machine. Although it's not terribly loud, it's something that I didn't expect to hear. So that's the only real knock I've got against this one. Otherwise, it seems to be performing very nicely. I love the form factor. The screen looks great. And altogether, a nice two-in-one from Dell. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.